Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the SWAS Monday Night Football Falcons, Eagles, and Philly. This should be a cool one. Um, I'm actually recording this before the Sunday Night Football game. So actually, it's about to kick off. Carrie Underwood is singing the song right behind the camera. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, I got Houston. Uh, I need Houston to cover. That would make the top bets 2-1 and one for back-to-back -back weeks. And I'll take that. Um, as far as Sunday as a whole, it wasn't great, but it really wasn't that bad. I mean, compared to yesterday, it was great because yesterday college football was terrible. Um, lost some BS bets. Like I threw the 49ers minus 4.5 in their last minute. Jags minus 3, another small side bet I lost. I lost some BS bets on the side. As far as the bets I took deep dives on and really liked, they were okay. I mean, Rams was stupid. Just a bad bet by me. Uh, the Giants, man, if you... <sighs> the Giants, dude. So the Giants decided to go into that game without a kicker. And look, I'm not saying like, oh, I got screwed and I deserve to win. But the truth is, they had the ball tied 18-18 at the end of the game. The only reason it was tied 18-18, the Giants had scored three touchdowns. They were unable to kick an extra point on all three of those. They didn't have a kicker on the roster. So we should have been up. The game should have been over. But no, they're forced to go for it on fourth down instead of kicking the game winning field goal because they didn't have a kicker. That Giants loss really had me heated. Uh, but the Cowboys game I had capped right. I mean, I, I said I like the matchup for Derek Carr. Jets Titans under hit. Um, so there were some good ones in there. It wasn't a good Sunday by any means, but it definitely was nothing compared to college football Saturday where I got crushed. Um, so yeah, hopefully I get Houston Falcons, Eagles in Philly. Monday Night Football. Let's do it. Welcome to the Swiss. The Swiss. Swiss. Hey, get the source. All right, like I said, we got Atlanta on the road in Philadelphia here. Eagles are now laying five and a half. This number was at six and a half. Dropped down to five and a half. Now, is that a result of some sharp action coming in on the Philadelphia side? Or maybe that's a reaction to the A.J. Brown news being out. Not sure if he would move the line a whole point, but maybe it sparked some action. Who knows? Uh, sitting at five and a half across the board, though. Total sitting at 46. So let's get into this one, and we'll start with these pie charts that you guys like. Um, according to this data, and again, take this data with a grain of salt. Um, according to this data, public action was leaning towards Atlanta, swung back towards Philly, and is sitting more around 50-50 now. Sharp action on the Philadelphia side. But that doesn't really make sense because the number dropped from 6.5 to 5.5, indicating some sharp action came in on the Atlanta side. But if you look closely at the bottom row of these pie charts, there was some Atlanta sharp action that came in. It was at 5%. It's now at 19%. But again, this data, take it with a grain of salt. So let's handicap this game, and we'll start with some head-to-head -head history. Uh, the home team has dominated this series. Atlanta's taken two in a row against the spread and straight up. They were both in Atlanta. Before that, Philly had taken three in a row against the spread and straight up. They were all in Philly. Before that, Atlanta, I mean, the, the home team has an excellent record. If it's in Philly, bet the Eagles. If it's in Atlanta, bet the Falcons. But look on the left side. Look at the years. 2021, 2019, 2018. These games aren't really relevant. It's just interesting to say before we get into the handicap. So what do we think of this new look Atlanta Falcons offense? Obviously, as I'm sure you've heard, the Arthur Smith era is over. Raheem Morris takes over as head coach. He was with the Rams last year. Zach Robinson takes over coaching the offense. The roster, the depth chart on the offensive side looks completely different. Kirk Cousins is now the quarterback. Three of their top four receivers are brand new. Darnell Mooney, Ray Ray McLeod, Rondell Moore, but Rondell Moore is currently hurt. Um, so definitely completely new look to this Falcons offense. Didn't exactly get off to the start they were looking for. They lost 18 to 10 at home. They were favored in the game by three and a half points. Um, I like the Steelers in that one. I had a, I the Steelers plus three and a half as a top bet. Falcons offense did not impress in the game. Just 226 total yards, 137 passing, 89 rushing. Kirk Cousins was under duress. He was pressured on 39.3% of his dropbacks. That was ninth most in the NFL. So the Steelers were able to get some pressure on Kirk Cousins. But it wasn't so much that Kirk Cousins was pressured. It was how he handled the pressure. Last week, when Kirk Cousins was pressured, he was sacked twice, 5 of 9, 71 passing yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions, 41.7 passer rating. So he did not do a good job of handling the pressure in that game. Now, I don't know if this is indicative of what we can expect from Kirk Cousins this year, though, because last year with Minnesota, before he got hurt, he was having the best season of his career, and he was excellent under pressure. In fact, he led the NFL 
with a 104.4 passer rating when pressured. That was first in the league. So he was excellent at handling pressure last year. So I don't know if that's something we can expect moving forward. I mean, maybe it was a week one thing. Maybe it's the fact that he's aging and he's coming off an Achilles injury. Maybe it was something the Steelers did on defense. Um, also, it could be his first game with a new team. I mean, part of performing under pressure if you're a quarterback, it's not just making the right throws. It's also being on the same page as your receivers. The whole off, it's quick decision making. So the fact that he's playing with receivers he's never played with, I mean, he had great chemistry with Justin Jefferson and KJ Osborne made a lot of plays for Kirk Cousins as well. So I'm sure that's a factor too. Um, I personally don't think this is indicative of what we can expect from Kirk Cousins this year. He was so good under pressure last year. I'm sure that will improve as the season progresses. Um, and I do have some good news if you're a Falcons fan. Eagles pass rush was pretty bad last year. I mean, they were just 21st in adjusted sack rate, 13th in pressure rate. It was a huge drop off from the 2022-2023 season when they had the best pass rush in the NFL. So definitely a very disappointing season for the Eagles pass rush last year. It was not that effective. Um, now, they were able to generate some pressure last week on Jordan Love. Jordan Love was pressured on 33.3% of his dropbacks. That was 16th most. So pretty average, pretty middle of the pack here. But I don't necessarily think we can count on that pressure being there against Atlanta. The Falcons offensive line is a very underrated unit in terms of pass protection. Yeah, they were 25th in adjusted sack rate. But look at their other metrics. They were 4th in pass blocking grade, 5th in pressure rate allowed. Basically what this tells us is Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke did that offensive line no favors, took a lot of sacks they had no business taking. Something like that'll make the whole offensive line look bad when the truth is they weren't allowing a ton of pressure on the quarterback. You combine that with the fact that the Eagles defense was pretty bad against the pass last year, this might be a decent spot for Cousins. I mean, look at the Eagles pass defense numbers from last year. 6.7 yards per, uh, per pass attempt, that's not terrible. That's 18th in the NFL. But look at the advanced metrics. 28th in EPA, 29th in DVOA. So this was not a good pass defense last year. Also, they really struggled with intermediate and short passes last year, 26th and 31st in those two zones. Look at Kirk Cousins' numbers from last year. He was great throwing the intermediate and short passes. Now, I don't know if these are a factor. He was playing in a completely different offense last year, but it was worth mentioning. So like I said, I don't think it's crazy to expect Kirk Cousins to bounce back. I think Kirk Cousins might play well, honestly. And I know that sounds crazy based on what we saw, just saw in his debut with the team, but I think he might play well. Um, now, what about the Falcons run game? Now, the Falcons run game, that, that was an anomaly last year because we all went into last season thinking the Falcons were going to have this dynamic rushing attack with Arthur Smith, right? I mean, the year before, they were they did a really good job running the ball. They drafted B. John Robinson, and we all expected the Falcons to have this unstoppable rushing attack, and that's just not what we saw. 4.1 yards per carry as a team, that was just 16th in the NFL. Some advanced metrics suggest that they were even worse than that, 28th in EPA, 22nd in DVOA. So this Falcons run game was definitely a letdown last year, and they didn't do anything special in the opener. 22 carries, 89 yards on the ground, 4.0 yards per carry. That was against Pittsburgh, who doesn't have a particularly great run defense. They're, they specialize in uh, pressuring the quarterback. So I'm really not sure how I feel about the Falcons run game. I don't have a ton of faith in it. That being said, the Eagles defense against the run, man, I mean... 4.3 yards per carry. That was 19th in the NFL. Advanced metrics, 30th in EPA, 22nd in DVOA. The Eagles really struggled against the run last year, and they didn't really get off to any sort of different start this season. Green Bay last week, 21 carries, 163 rushing yards. That's 7.8 yards per carry. So they ran the ball all over the Eagles last week. Now, to be fair, these numbers are a little bit misleading. Uh, Josh Jacobs broke a 35-yarder towards the end of the game. Uh, Jaden Reed also broke like a 35-yard end around. So it wasn't quite this explosive, but no question the Packers were able to run the ball in the Eagles. And what I really don't like about the Eagles run defense from last year is they seem to get worse as the season progressed. Look at their numbers from week eight on. They allowed over four and a half yards per carry, over 130 rushing yards per game. They were really struggling to stop the run in the second half of last season. So do I necessarily think the Falcons are going to run the ball over the Eagles in Philly? Not really, but I do expect the run to be there a little bit for them. Now, what about on the other side? Let's talk about the Eagles offense. Uh, Jalen Hurts was okay in the opener. 20 of 34, 278 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions, an 80.3 passer rating. I mean, that's okay. 
Um, a little bit concerned that 119 of those yards, though, they went to A.J. Brown. And the reason that's concerning is he's not playing in this game. He's already been ruled out. Actually, Johnny Wilson hasn't practiced all week either. He's listed as questionable. Uh, he's their rookie from Florida State, although anything from Florida State shouldn't be trusted. That's a joke. Um, so the, the Eagles will be without A.J. Brown, maybe without Johnny Wilson. And the reason I'm bringing this up, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith were the only two wide receivers on the Eagles roster that caught a pass last week. So without A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith is the only receiver on the team that has a catch this year. And it gets deeper than that. He's actually the only receiver on the roster that had a catch with the Eagles last year. There actually is one guy who had four receptions. But in terms of wide receivers for Jalen Hurts to throw the ball to, it's basically Devontae Smith and a bunch of guys that have never caught passes from Jalen Hurts. Um, now, Dallas Goddard is there, obviously the tight end. He's been playing with Hurts for years. Um, but as a whole, when it comes to wide receiver, not a ton of experience with Jalen Hurts. Now, what do we think about the Atlanta pass defense? And this is where it gets challenging. Um, last year, they allowed just 6.3 yards per pass attempt. That was ninth in the NFL. Advanced metrics suggest they were worse than that, though. 21st in EPA, 30th in DVOA. So some advanced metrics suggest that this was not a good pass defense. But keep in mind, just like the offense, we're talking about an entirely new defense. Raheem Morris is the head coach. He's a defensive guy. He was with the Rams last year. And based on what we saw in week one, it's almost impossible to try to make a prediction on what we're going to see from the Falcons defense. Here are the numbers from last year. They ran a ton of man coverage. 56% of their defensive snaps last year were in man coverage. That was fourth most in the NFL. What do we see in week one? They ran more zone coverage than any other defense in the NFL. Uh, so safe to say, we don't really know what we're going to see here from Raheem Morris and the Falcons defense. Now, was it successful? Yeah, I mean, Justin Fields didn't do much through the air. 17 of 23, 156 yards, a 91.9 passer rating, no touchdowns. I mean, so yeah, I guess it was successful, but you're playing Justin Fields. <laughs> Is that really a fair gauge? You can run whatever defense you want. He's not the most gifted thrower of the ball. Jalen Hurts and the Eagles offense might be a slightly different situation. They were 11th in the NFL last year, 7.2 yards per attempt, 9th in passing EPA, 12th in passing DVOA. But honestly, without A.J. Brown, I think rather than talking about the Eagles passing attack, we should be talking about the rushing attack. Because look at the bottom of this graphic. They were 10th in the NFL, averaging 4.3 yards per carry, 4th in rushing EPA, 5th in DVOA. And oh yeah, they added Saquon Barkley, who went absolutely nuts in week one. 26 touches, 132 total yards, three total touchdowns. So what we really need to be asking is, is the Falcons defense capable of stopping him? Um, well, the Falcons were elite against the run last year. They were ninth in the NFL, allowing just four yards per carry, first in run defense EPA, 11th in run defense DVOA. And they did a great job against the Steelers rushing attack, which we have said we expect to be pretty good this year. Now, they were missing an offensive lineman in the game, but still, they tried to run the ball. 41 carries, 137 rushing yards, 3.3 yards per carry. So the Falcons defense, despite getting a new coaching staff, looking like they're picking up right where they left off in terms of defending the run. And honestly, if you look at their personnel on defense, it does make sense. They added Matthew Judon, one of the better defenders in the entire league. Uh, Grady Jarrett is healthy. He missed the entire second half of last season. Uh, Nate Landman is out for this game, and that's a, that's a significant loss. So they are missing an inside linebacker, but they also added Justin Simmons this year at six. Safety. So even with an entirely new coaching staff, I don't think it's crazy to say this Falcons defense is a lead against the run again. I mean, they're healthier. They might even be better, which is why I cannot lay five and a half, six points with the Eagles. I'm on the Falcons here. I wish I grabbed it at six and a half. I didn't. I have Falcons plus five and a half going with the dog on Monday Night Football. As far as the total goes, I'd lean under. But honestly, I'm just going to stick with Falcons plus five and a half. Um, I think this team is capable of taking the run away or at least limiting the run from the Eagles, forcing Jalen Hurts to make plays through the air, and he's missing A.J. Brown. Too many things pointing towards the Falcons here. Live show, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. We'll go through the MLB slate. Then we'll do this game. Might even do some college football games at the end. Uh, if you're able to make it, we'd love to see you in the comments. Let's get this week started off properly. Had a terrible weekend. Well, I had a terrible Saturday. Sunday was okay. I mean, it wasn't that bad. Um, but yeah, terrible weekend. Need this W here. Give me Falcons plus five and a half. Let's have a good one.